Okay, today's episode is absolutely fantastic. I know you guys are going to love Devin Burke. I met Devin at a biohacking conference, found out that he was previously, you know, kind of did what I did, high performance coaching, and then he went straight into sleep. He's like, this is, this is something we got to start talking about sleep. And so now he's an international and TEDx speaker. He's the best selling author of The Sleep Advantage. He's the founder of Sleep Science Academy and one of the top health and sleep coaches in the world. Um, his books, keynote programs, and videos have inspired thousands of people to improve their sleep, energy, and life. Um, he helps high achievers and exhausted insomniacs, he says, get and stay asleep so they can wake up with more peace, power, and presence. Um, he was named one of the top 25 health coaches in America and has studied innovative holistic health coaching methods from some of the world's top health and human performance experts for over a decade. As a speaker and coach, he's inspired thousands of people to open their eyes to what is possible through creating new sleep, health, and performance habits and routines. So here's the deal. When I met Devin, um, we started talking about sleep and I'm at a biohacking conference. Okay. So like biohacking, it's like, okay, here's all the tech and all the methods and all the supplements and all the things that you got to do. And Devin just rolls out with, they got, it's, it's mindset. It's mindset. And I was like, okay, now I'm listening. Now I'm listening. What you got, dude. I was so impressed with him. So I'm not going to spoil any more of it. I'm going to let him get in the episode. Um, but before we do, um, you can visit his website, devinburke.com for his sleep science Academy. That's sleep science academy.com. Um, and we'll link up his book as well on Amazon, the sleep advantage. Um, also find him on social media. It's Devin Burke. That's Devin with an I Devin Burke wellness. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll link all that up, but, um, yeah, Ugh. we start off the first half of the episode, all basically all mindset. And then we get deeper into physiological and environmental factors that contribute to sleep. But yeah, Devin is a paradigm shifter. I don't hear anybody talking about what he's talking about with sleep. So I'm super excited to bring him to you today. Here is Devin Burke. Okay. I want to get right into the nitty gritty. <laughs> so like when we met at, what was it like a biohacking conference, right? That's right. And you said that you used to be a high performance coach, basically kind of doing what I'm doing. And then your clients started to have questions about sleep. Right. And so you started diving in and this is where I want to, cause like what you were saying about sleep when we met, I was like, thank God, like no one is talking about this because in the biohacking realm, I know so many people that are, they're like sleep experts. They know all the biohacks. They have the chili pad and the blackout curtains and all the supplements and their whoop strap or their aura ring and like all of these different things they do in these meditations and like, you know, supplements out the wazoo and all this stuff. And they sleep terribly. <laughs> <laughs> and I have like tried so many of these things with clients and I'm like, okay, well, shit, maybe you're just wired that way <laughs> because I'll share real quick. Like for me, I sleep like the dead and I always have, like, I never wake up at night. I'm not earning it. It's, it doesn't even matter if there's lights on. It doesn't matter if it's hot. The only thing that will ever wake me up is if it's like freezing cold, you know? And so I'm like, all right, there's more to it than just the biohacking science stuff. So in this episode, I want to get into some of that. Cause I know you obviously know about that stuff, but I want to start with the mindset stuff. Cause this is the shit that no one's talking about that needs to be talked about. So, um, I'll let you kind of take the reins, but I, I definitely want to talk about, I heard you on another podcast talking about on um, these three P's, mm. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So let's dive in. What top, let's yes. talk about the mind and so, sleep. Yeah. So like, first and foremost, the reason why so many of those things that people try don't end up helping is because sleep is not something that you can force or control. And the oftentimes the harder you try to sleep, the worse you sleep. And this is what people <laughs> don't get. And it's not just a phys physical challenge. And I like to say sleep isn't the problem, it's sleep is a result. So mm. when people treat it like it's a problem, mm. that's actually a problem because wow. sleep, so that's like a really important distinction for people to get. And another important one is, so all of the things that you just mentioned, the chili pad, mattresses, all of this biotech is phenomenal for sleep quality, but right. most people, they don't realize they actually have insomnia. They're, they're <laughs> and it doesn't like sleep hygiene is, is, can, can be effective for, you know, improving deep sleep and REM sleep and, right. and all that. But if you have insomnia, 
that actually can make it worse because now you become obsessed with, oh, I need to try these supplements and I, I need to buy this and I need to do this and that. And that actually creates this pressure, this unnecessary pressure that keeps you from actually sleeping. And it's Oof. so subtle. It's so subtle. And people totally miss this. And, uh, and then it gets worse because the more people try and the more those things don't work, the more it reinforces the false belief that they're broken, that they're yeah. going to have to you're going to deal with this for the rest of their life. It's, it's a, it's absolutely, it must be a genetic thing, right? So there's like, there's so many little insidious beliefs and thoughts that come from people mm. sort of going through this shotgun approach of, Hey, this is the quick fix. This is going to do it. And then it doesn't. And now all of a sudden it's like, boom, they're just, they're adding another, I call it a leg to the belief table that, you know, I am a bad sleeper. I can't solve this. Wow. I'm broken. Wow. And so that is the problem. <laughs> That's the wow. Problem. <laughs> Mic drop. I just want to be like, hallelujah. I just, because like mm. pressure, you are speaking my language. Like that is so much of a part of my coaching. Just it, it, this goes with everything. I'm like, what does pressure mm. do? Pressure shrinks something. It makes it smaller. It makes it more compact, more congested, yep. more, you know, and when we can relieve the pressure, we can start to come into a place of being and peace and flow and surrender. So like whether it's food training, uh, goals, entrepreneurship, business <laughs> stuff, it, pressure is not the way to go. And so many people use pressure there. They've patterned pressure as a mo the only tool for motivation that they have, right? Like, yep. it's like, if I don't pressure myself, I'll become all my worst nightmares. Basically I'll become a fat slob, lazy loser that does nothing with their life. So I have to hold on to pressure because that yep. is the only thing I've ever experienced that gets me all lit up. But when you're in that, but when you act out of pressure, you might crush out some goals, but your energy is small. You are contracted. You are not enough. So man, all right, let's, let's keep, let's go deeper. So this pressure, what does this kind of look like for people? Yeah. So, so, and, and this leads us right into those, the three P's. So I, what I discovered after literally I've spoken to thousands of people that have sleep issues and coached hundreds of people that literally have tried sleeping medications, therapies, acupuncture, you name it, still weren't sleeping. We've been able to help them. And it's a lot, this there's, there's three P's. There's these patterns that people fall into that create um, them having a real challenge trying to solve this. The first one is perfectionism pattern. And a lot of people experience bad sleep because they're highly intelligent and they're these perfectionists and they try to perfect sleep. They're like, okay. And in every other area of their life, when they're sort of, yeah. again, the harder they're trying to do something, the better outcome they get. Sleep is one of the few things in life that that doesn't work. Wow. So this perfectionism, it really comes out and people really see it like, wow, not I, they see it number one as a barrier for them being able to let their body relax. The body right. has this, it knows how to relax, but then it goes, you know, then they start to see, Oh my God, I'm, you know, in my relationship and they start to see in all these other aspects. Um, but once wow. they, they shift it and they, they see how it works with their sleep, then they start to say, Oh, wow, I can use this in my work or I can use wow. this in my relationship. Totally. Um, so that's a huge one. That's, that's the first one. The second P is what I call the problem solver pattern. I kind of mentioned this a little bit in the beginning of this conversation is people are trying to, you know, they're treating sleep like it's the problem. And that is the problem. It's not the problem. Sleep is a result. And when people get that, it's yeah. like, oh, I can relax. And, and it, it allows the body to kind of shift wow. into this place of softening. Like you mentioned this, wow. you know, and again, it's like so common that people are like sleeps, the problem sleeps, the problem. And then it right. creates the third P and this is the most difficult one for most people, people to understand and actually break because they put it on a pedestal. So it's the pedestal pattern. And the truth is it kind of deserves to be on a pedestal, but by putting it on a pedestal, you're creating again, more of this pressure. If I don't see, yes. I'm going to be a low performer. I'm, go I'm yes. going to get Alzheimer's. I'm going to, you know, continue to be irritable and it's going to create issues in my relationship. So they're putting sleep on this pedestal and wow. I need to get sleep or else my life is falling apart. And, and this is where it's tricky, this one, because it's it, in some essence, it's true. Like it's true. All that's true. And it deserves to be there. But by putting it on that pedestal, again, it's a subtle thing that creates this pressure that then keeps you from sleep.
So those are the three piece. Yeah. It's like this desire and striving. Um, you know, I call it like dangling carrot syndrome. Like what I want is way out there. And when you're in that mentality, that carrot will always keep moving. Always. It's just like, I I'm, I'm back here and that's out there and I can't get it. And it's this less than, uh, very, um, it's like a put down to ourselves. It's like that, that thing's better. And I'm just this little old me can't figure it out. And, you know, and I'm curious your methodologies. Cause for me, one of the, I have a, you know, I have all the, I'm sure you have these two in coaching. I have all these little phrases I use all the time and I call it closing the gap, like just becoming, coming into that place now. Like, so if you want to be a fit and healthy person, be one right now. That's all you Mm -hmm. have is just right now. Just what, what does fit and healthy me choose right now? Okay. Next moment. What does fit and healthy me choose? Okay. Next moment. Right. So I'm curious, you know, uh, this, my mind is going like everywhere with this uh, talk about perfectionism and pressure because I have a lot of high achieving clients and I've noticed, um, so we do something called neurotyping in my coaching, which is like from Christian Thibodeau. And it's basically, you're taking personality traits and seeing what's their dominant neurotransmitters might be right. Like people who are more sensitive to dopamine, for example, will be more driven, more perfectionist, more um, competitive, more get shit done, more organized. I call them engineer brains. They can like, they're the problem solvers too, right? Yes. And these are the people that I see always, they're always the ones who struggle with sleep. So I was like, maybe, maybe it's just because they're sensitive to dopamine and they're, you know, they're like, it keeps them more because it makes you alert and aware and those kind of things. But I actually think like from hearing you talk about this, I'm like, I actually think they just have a hard time because it doesn't make sense that your body wouldn't naturally be able to sleep like, you know? And so I just think it's probably a fixation on that pattern is making it hard to let go of. So can you talk about like those kind of people, how do they get it? They're like, shit, dude, how do I do that? (laughs) Tara, (laughs) you said the the magic word, let go. Yeah. And it's one of the, like, so in, probably in most areas of their life that this type of person, it serves them. It serves them, right? Make more money, um, perform, be a top performer in this arena. It's not serving you. And this is where you get to let go. And so we like surrender, let go, accept, um, allow these are the, this is the type of language when people actually embody and they're able just to see it and just drop it and not resist it let go of expectations of what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Again, then the online, the body's intelligence comes online and the body knows how to sleep. And, and then there's all these other beliefs that people have, because usually people that are of this type of nature, maybe their parents are like this or someone, and then they see their parents have issues sleeping and and then it's, Oh, it's genetic. Oh, my, my dad was a top, you know, my dad or my grandfather or whatever it is. And now they start building this whole thing, right. to all these things. And it's like, I'm sorry. It's, it's not, it's not genetic. Like maybe yeah. you're, it's, it's not, it's <laughs> learned. Exactly. Like I, um, I actually, I hope Drew doesn't mind me sharing this, but Drew Manning, do you know him fit to fat fit guy? I did his mm-hmm. DNA testing. So he's like shredded and, you know, fitness model look or whatever, but I did his DNA testing. He has like all the obesity genes, right? Wow. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing that, but like, it's his lifestyle. It's his choices that he's making. Right. And he does have some family members who are pretty overweight. Right. And so it's like, sure. Like his genes could go that way, but <laughs> it's mostly the, the learned behaviors, the mimicked patterns are going to cause that expression of genes, right? Like we have so much more, <laughs> uh, seat at the table than we think <laughs> in terms of genes, it's learned behaviors. And, yep. you know, I have to vouch for this. Um, I said, when we talked, I used some of your, cause I remember you saying something so profound that I've used with some of my clients since we talked and you said something about when people wake up in the middle of the night, they judge themselves. They get stressed out. They're like, oh shit, I woke up again. Oh, freak. Oh, and they get all anxious and worried about it. And they're like, fall asleep, fall asleep, fall asleep. Oh, I'm not going to be able to, I might as well go do work or, you know, it's just like mm-hmm. this like crazy manic place. And so my clients that have been struggling with sleep, I taught them what you taught me. It's just, it's okay. It's okay to wake up. <laughs> no worries. You had to pee. No big deal. Right? right. And I use that with them and they like, it's been amazing. It has been amazing. They're like, yep. I went, I, I woke up to pee, but they, you know, they've immediately adopted their like, no big deal. You know, I fell back asleep, whatever. So that pressure 
release. I've seen it work with some of my clients since we talked. So just want to vouch for that. Well, I'm, I'm so happy that you're sharing that and that you're seeing it work because sometimes people miss it because it's simple. Yeah. And we're always looking for like these shiny objects or this magic yep. meditation or whatever. Yep. And like, it's not about doing more. It's actually about not doing the things that are keeping your body from doing what it knows how to do. Yeah. And, yeah. and like the mantra, it's okay. Like, yeah. Like it, when you can get to that place of it's okay yeah. and just allow it to be again, your body goes to sleep and knows how it goes. Yeah. To sleep. My, my phrase for where I'm always, you know, I feel most aligned is, is I'm good either way. That's right? a great I phrase. Know, like I'm in flow. I'm in surrender. I'm, I'm not having resistance. I'm not having clingy desires when I'm like, I'm good either way. So like with sleep, mm. I could, you know, easily see myself doing that. If I did wake up, I was like, Oh, good. If I'm awake good, if I'm asleep and you'll but, probably fall asleep. <laughs> that's it because you, you're creating the, the, the greatest opportunity for sleep to actually happen. Yeah. And, and like, it's from that place, that neutral place, that's when it, it does happen versus yeah. the opposite of that, which would be, Oh, let me do something so that I can get back to sleep. Yeah. And stimulate my brain. <laughs> right. So everyone's like, Oh, well, the question I get all the time is what do I do when I wake up in the middle of the night? Mm. I'm like, don't do anything. It, you know, like that's it. Like literally, you know, if you're up and you know, you're not going to fall back asleep after 20 minutes, remove yourself from the bed and bedroom, do something relaxing maybe, but don't do something. So you go back to sleep, maybe mm. just do something to do it. It's not yeah. so, the, so that that little, that little, so that I'm doing this so that I get back to sleep. It's right. that little bit right mm. there. Mm that creates that little, mm. yeah, it's so yes. subtle. It's, it's so being subtle. overly, it, this is, I'm so freaking aligned, like in, in my health coaching with like nutrition and training. I'm like, if you're all of your efforts in your food and your training are results-based only, you will miss it and you will give up because you won't, you won't be getting those results as fast as you want. You, you removed all joy from that meal. Mm -hmm. You removed all joy from that workout because it's that dangling carrot thing. It's I'm back here and I got so far to go. And if you can let go of being so freaking results-based and just being like, dude, this is fun. I, or this is delicious. Like mm -hmm. you will get those results without even ever having to worry about them. Right. Yeah. It's finding like, being in the moment and finding joy and pleasure. And it's that's so that I love that I'm doing this so that I get this, ah! you know, it's just like, I'm doing this because it feels good and it feels aligned and it feels right to me. And my higher self is all up in this right now. Yeah. That's so, that's it. so key. Okay. So your sleep Academy, I'm assuming like, so you start out with mindset work in regards to sleep. Yeah, because that's where what most people are missing. Most people, yeah. they've, they've tried. At, at, the point that people get to us is when they've tried, they're either on a medication, they want to get off it because it stopped working or the side right. effects are worse. Mm -hmm. um, they've tried all the therapies, the acupuncture, the functional doctor. So they're kind of like the end of their rope. And the piece yeah. that they're missing is this mindset piece, is understanding mm -hmm. how their thoughts and beliefs create patterns in the body that release you know, all these chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline that then keep them up. So we always start with the mind, unpack, yeah. hey, what, what's going on and how you're thinking and, and the thoughts that you're, you're, the beliefs that you're, you're telling yourselves that are creating this hyper arousal, we get them out of that. And then we adjust the physiology and then lastly, the environment. Okay. Let's dive into those. Cause I know, you know, your shit and the health, you know, all, all of the geeky science stuff too. So we don't want to discredit that. Like, so, isn't it funny how sometimes people are like, it's like you throw around a bunch of big words that they don't know what they mean and all these like supplements and products. And people are like, Oh, you know what you're talking about, but you're like, <laughs> dude, no, like actually <laughs> that simple thing I told you about relaxing, that's actually it. But yeah, sure. We can talk about some of these other science <laughs> things, <laughs> but let's talk about them. Cause some of them do matter, right? Like, obviously, yeah. you know, if you're a slow a metabolizer of caffeine and you're having, you know, an inner six energy drinks a day, like, duh, you know? Right. Right. Well, people, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's funny because common sense is not common practice by no yeah. means. And especially when it comes to sleep. And so there's so many people that even, you know, they're complaining about their sleep and they're trying to improve their sleep. And then it's just like, you, you start asking them questions and they're like, oh yeah, I do like have a big coffee at like, 3 p.m. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's well, maybe noticing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or, or like, yeah, I do have really challenging conversations and think about work when I'm in my bed. Yeah. Yeah. And these are awareness. You're right. Like, it's it, no shame in that. Like, we all have certain things that's like, oh, I didn't realize this was correlated with that. 
right? Like some people still to this day, lots of people out there, they have, they do not realize that the food they're eating is creating their anxiety and depression. They have no idea that it's correlated. They don't know that their gut health is impacting their ability to be happy. They, they don't know. Yep. They're like, yep. Oh, okay. Good to know. So let's talk about some of the physiological, the big hitters on yeah. sleep. Yeah. So, I mean, one important thing you got to talk about is, is temperature and light. I mean, those are the two things that kind of control what I call your sleep system. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, and, and it really important here, you know, don't obsess over this, but yeah, lighting is really, if you want to, the physiology of sleep, those two things, temperature and light are critical, mm -hmm. are important. So getting, you know, light first thing in the morning, making sure that you're, you're not getting blaring light late at night. Um, especially if you're a sensitive person can make a difference in the quality of your sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are all kinds of hacks and devices and things out there, but the best thing is just going outside and actually using the sun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, not know, wearing sunglasses in the morning not, on your way to work. <laughs> that's it. Not wearing sunglasses. And if you can, I love to, watching a sunset. I usually, when I'm able to do it, my, mm -hmm. I get better sleep. It's mm -hmm. just, I've tried it too. Like it's, they call it like sunset gazing or something. Yep. And like mm -hmm. the idea is to like observe how the earth just lets go, like how the earth just keeps moving. It's okay. It's not like, no, let me cling to the day. <laughs> I don't want it to be over. It's like, it's okay. Just surrender to it. And I I've done that. And I actually did find like that deeper lesson that I got out of it, like really helped me with sleep. It's like in meditation, I'd say, help me with that too. In terms of going to sleep. It's just this like, it's okay to just let it go today's because I, I used to have a hard time falling asleep yep. and that has meditation. I'd say is probably the biggest thing of being able to just release, release things, release thoughts, release the day. Like it's okay. Mm. Like I don't have to sit here and cling to it and think about it and analyze and figure it all out. Right. So yeah. Sunset gazing or meditation, I feel like are really helpful for sure. For and, and from a physiological standpoint too, the, the hues of light, like if you look at a fire too, like that, mm. that there's certain hues of light, the orange, mm. uh, the yellow that actually mm -hmm. are create a calming effect. That's why like salt lamps in your home are yeah. great, you know, um, yep. or candescent bulbs versus the LEDs. Yeah. Um, anything that's going to be like really fluorescent and bright, that's with a lot of blue light. You don't want really that type of lighting in your home or at night. It's just, you, it's. Do you know, Devin, I've heard like some things here and there, and I don't know if you've come across this, but I've heard like some people are more sensitive to blue light than others, like genetically. Do you know anything about that? Do you think there's any anything to it? I, in my own experience, I think there's just hypersensitive people. Like, so yeah. some people are just, and, and for whatever reason, again, sort of genetically or learned or whatever, maybe it's a combination of both. Some people are just more sensitive to like everything. Yeah. So sense. those people, whether it's electromagnetic frequencies or even people's energy um, or light um, or smells or sound, loud sounds, whatever it is, some people just are like, have a heightened level of mm. awareness and attention naturally. Yeah, and right. those are the types of people that I feel like really get impacted the most from, you know, light or, or, or really even anything. It's just these hypersensitive types of people. Interesting. Okay. Qu words of wisdom on this. Um, like one of the things that I, cause I'm really big on the morning routine in my coaching, which is now basically most of the emphasis on that has become nighttime routine because they're never going to do their morning routine. If they don't go to bed, I need them to get enough sleep. And you know, if they're staying up late and watching TV, I mean, mm -hmm. scrolling TikTok and all of these things, like and now we're going to, I'm like it, the nighttime routine is where it starts. And what I have found is like, let's say somebody is like currently staying up and watching Netflix or scrolling their phone till like 11. Right. Um, I have found it's really difficult for someone to go from that to like, I'm just going to do nothing and just go to my bed and lay there. Like I try to like build, I'm like, what do you like doing? Like replacing it with something that they like, like, do you happen to like journaling or is there certain kind of like easy reading books? Like mm -hmm. I definitely don't recommend reading personal development at night. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> way too stimulating. I'm like, Oh, I tried it once. I was like, Oh my God. Like I just can't care about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any like words of wisdom on like getting off screens? Like, like how to create a flow that's like enjoyable that someone might actually do instead of yeah. just cold turkey. What do you, what do no, you No, no, hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's more so the content that matters the most, which mm. is what you're alluding to. Like even mm. if you're going to watch a show, you don't want to be watching something that's going to get you all hyped up right. or reading something that's going to like, I, I like to read personally like spiritual books because yeah. they're right. Me too. It's like, night. 
it's just it relaxes Loving. me. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, so, so content matters, but it's, you know, creating a, what we call like a bed buffer and a bedtime routine, really mm-hmm. important for people. Um, and you know, you don't, it's important to understand that you don't need to do anything to sleep, but by doing a bedtime routine and having a ritual that sort of allows the mind and body to start to dial back or dial yeah. down, Yes, it's important. And it can yes. be like, I love what you're coaching your clients on, which is telling them like, find something that you like, because if you don't like it, chances of you continuing to do it are very slim. I've right? got, yeah, I've got a bunch so, of clients using tarot cards now. And we're <laughs> like, it doesn't even matter if you believe in that stuff, they just like it. It's this little ritual. Um, I use like little candle things in my room and I have a salt lamp and like a selenite lamp and I like it, right? Like it's just this yeah. little vibe and I do my little tarot cards and like, it's fun, you know? So it like makes, it's, it's, I look forward to it. And, you know, you, you hit on something so big, like that, that nighttime routine, this is how I see it. I I'm like our bodies, <laughs> it's such a weird thing to say, but I feel like our bodies are like dogs, like they're trainable. Like we know yeah. we have research. We know that like, if you work out at the same time every day, that your body will start to release chemicals to get you ready at yeah. that time of day consistently. And so at nighttime, just like, like I have four kids, like every parent knows, every parent knows that if you have a ritual at night, it's bath song book, maybe the same book, the same, everything, they will just start to get sleepy. Like it's crazy. It's just the chemicals are the bodies. It's like Pavlov effect. It's like, Oh, <laughs> sleep time. So yeah, that better yeah, treat buffer. Your, I yeah, love tre- that. Yeah. Treat yourself. Like you treat your kids. Yeah. Literally. I mean, it's toddlers that grow up. Exactly. (laughs) We're the same. (laughs) We are. And it's, you know, take a hot bath and light a candle and say, you know, and and read a book and make some hot tea and stretch and relax and, or maybe play music or make love to your partner, like whatever, something that's going to, you know, allow you to just shift, shift into that place and that space of relaxation. Because yeah. It's, it's like, you know, we're so hyper stimulated throughout the entire day. Mm -hmm. It gets Mm -hmm. like, we carry that into the night. And if you're, if you're going to do that, then you're not going to sleep well. That's just totally how it's going to be. I think a lot of people watch TV and get on their phones and stuff because they don't want to process the things that are going through their mind. And I'm like, well, if you don't do it earlier, you're going to start doing it when you turn, finally turn the lights off most likely, you know, and like how can you ever grow or be happy Mm. if you refuse to feel those uncomfortable things of like, wow, I notice I'm feeling guilt about that, or I'm feeling shame about that, or I'm feeling concerned or worried. Like we have to be willing to go into those states. And so for me, like I will not do anything productive after seven, like there's Mm. no work, like the laptop doesn't get open. Like I don't run to the store at that time of night. Like I want to start letting everything start to slide down, you know, and it's, it, yeah. it, it has been a process for me because I used to be that person, you know, I used to be up till 11 midnight, sometimes watching stuff or trying to work, crank out projects and like that shit sucked. I don't it know sucks. how else to say it. <laughs> yeah, no, you said it great. I mean, and it, I love, I want to just kind of put a pin in what you said. Most people use distraction methods and there's a time and a place for distraction methods, but dealing with you, feeling your feelings, being with yourself is critical, like creating the space to do that. And that's why, you know, having the morning routine, it's great to do it in the morning. Cause sometimes at night, if stuff comes up, it might be overwhelming or whatever, but allowing that space to process versus trying to escape yourself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is what most people do yeah. all day. And yeah. then they try, and then it's like, um, you know, it's so, so important because for instance, in my experience, people that hold on to, let's say, anger or resentment, they don't sleep well. Yeah. yeah. And it's sometimes it's for them, uh, you know, they're angry at themselves or they're resenting yeah. themselves for something they did or didn't do or others. And it's like, you got to deal with that stuff because that yeah. those emotions get stuck in the body. And yeah. it, like you said, it, like the body constricts and a yeah. constricted body is, is not relaxed. It's, it's, yeah. it's, Um, so allowing yourself to feel your feelings fully, allowing yourself to forgive, like that's a a big one. This is like Mm -hmm. emotional, like Mm -hmm. forgiving yourself or forgiving someone else. Do you think that if if you forgive yourself or forgive someone else, you're going to sleep better? A hundred percent. And most people are like carrying around, oh, my dad did this and and my wife or whatever it is, like all this right stuff look how shitty my life is because of my ex-husband or you know like that happened today it's because of him you know right and your body is just like (laughs) "Eh." 
you know, it's like, it's just freaking out. And I think a lot of people, this has been my experience. I think a lot of times people don't want to go there because they don't have the tools. They don't know how to process that kind of stuff. So I'm like, either hire a coach, or if you're not willing to do that, like you can get a book on audible or on Amazon for 15, 20 bucks, like start there, like something, some kind of help, because usually we're working with the same materials until something new comes in, you know? So if yeah. like, if you're listening to this and you're like, dude, no, like I don't want to freaking process any of this crap because every time I try, I just get in a worse place and I don't know how to do it. And the, like, it's time to invest in either a coach or a book or something to help you learn how to process through those emotions a little better. So, okay. All right. We kind of got off tangent, but it was an awesome <laughs> off tangent. So we had a uh, light and then let's go into temperature. Cause this is, I have some thoughts about nutrition on this too. So let's, let's hear why yeah, does temperature so, matter and what's the best scenario. So cooler is better. Our body temperature needs to drop two to three degrees Fahrenheit for sleep to actually happen. And so that's why taking a warm bath or a hot shower, you think it would actually be detrimental to sleep. It's, it actually improves your sleep because when you get out of the bath or the shower, it helps facilitate that core body yeah. temperature dropping two to three degrees yeah. and makes that sleep. You get, you get sleepy. There's a great, um, supplement glycine, you know, it's in naturally found in bone broth that helps mm-hmm. with body temperature regulation. Hmm. Um, but it's, you know, anything that's going to help your body start to cool off yeah. towards the end of the day is going to be helpful. Let exercise, you know, if you exercise too close to bed, this is why it can disturb sleep is because you're yeah. carrying all that energy, yeah. all that heat, and it's taking your body longer to then try to cool off to have sleep happen. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, one of the easiest things, like I, I love just taking a hot shower, like rinsing off the day. Yeah. Um, you know, physically it's, it's good because it's helping the body temperature jump, drop mentally. It's good because you're kind of like washing off whatever you picked up. Yeah. Um, so, and then in the bedroom too, there's, there's obviously the mattress. Some people are sleeping on tempur mattresses, which are very comfortable, but they actually, unfortunately, because they're so comfortable, but they, they absorb heat. And so it's just, they're not breathe. Those mattresses don't breathe. So yeah. people are staying hot throughout the whole night. Um, and, and so, so what you're sleeping on the surface, you're sleeping on how many blankets you have, what the, the fabric is of the blankets that all can sort of help with this temperature regularization. Do you have recommendations on mattresses and sheets that you happen to like, like fabrics or materials? Yeah, I'm big into materials and fabrics. Okay. Um, so there is a great, so actually it's Oprah Winfrey's favorite sheets. They're these bamboo sheets. Nice. Uh, it's called cozy earth. Now okay. they're, it's an investment. Um, but I've seen sheets that literally people spend thousands of dollars on. It's not thousands of dollars. It is hundreds of dollars, mm. but the bamboo it's it, number one, it's, it's, it's cool. And it doesn't pick up all the bacteria, which nice. a lot of like cotton sheets and some of these synthetic sheets that even like kind of feel nice. They you're sweating and you're, you know, you're shedding skin throughout the, right. it's like, you know, so I'm a big fan of bamboo. Uh, definitely it's a game changer if you're cool. used to sleeping on cotton. Um, Noted ordering right after this. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, we give them as a gift for people that send us referrals. They're like, oh, they're like $400 cool. sheets, wow. but it's, it's, they're so, they're so comfortable. Like honestly. Okay. I'll text my clients and tell them to work with you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, so that <laughs> as far as sheets go, bamboo is incredible. Now mattresses, there is, I mean, so many mattresses out there and some of them are, terrible and some of them are incredible and it just depends on you know what do you value i'm currently sleeping on it's called a um it's city mattress it's a prana line it's their newest mattress it has it's infused with copper and it's a latex Mm. based mattress and latex doesn't hold heat and this thing is it's awesome and actually I've, i've noticed i've been sleeping on it for about a month and um it's it's quite an investment but my deep sleep scores have increased and literally all I changed was the mattress. And I, it has to do absolutely has to do with the temperature regulation. Um, Is the copper the also for EMFs? You know, Is that the idea it, behind it. What's the it, copper for? It was actually for bacteria. So oh, wow. okay. yeah, because copper is, is an amazing antimicrobial and antibacterial huh. and, and wow. most people don't realize your mattress every year pounds pounds of dead skin. Like if you weigh your mattress year after year, you'll, it'll be a few pounds of sweat wow. and skin and, 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 and bugs, not like bed bugs, but like 
you know, just yeah. creatures uh, yeah. in your mattress, dust mites and things like that. So, um, so that's, that's the line, but it, I think it also helps with the EMF. I imagine okay. it would as well. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say about temperature, a friend of mine, who's a health coach, we, we are all, we're always geeking out. And sh- we were talking about eating right before bed. And she was talking about that in light of temperature increase, mm. because when you eat food, I mean, we know obviously that when you're digesting food, your body can't repair itself. Your brain can't cleanse itself. All of these things. Cause you're busy being in digest mode instead of repair mode. But when she brought that up about temperature, I was like, that is such a good point. It's, um, it's also, you're heating up your body temperature to Mm. digest food, which, which is one of the major sleep disruptors. So it's like, man, get full earlier, get nice and full, eat a big ass dinner and start winding down and go to bed early. And I just have to vouch for the shower thing you were saying, cause this just happened last week. My nine-year-old I was like, I just taught him this last week. I was like, Hey, Micah, go, go take a shower right before bed. Cause you used to sleep so much better. And I didn't even think about that with the, it dropping your core body temperature. I've just noticed that. Right. Yeah. And, and the next morning I was driving him to school and he goes, he looks over at me with like big eyes. He was like, so dead serious. <laughs> and he's like, I I am so happy. I am in such a good mood <laughs> because I took a shower and I fell asleep like right at eight 30 and I like just woke up and I feel so good, you know? And I think that <laughs> that shower did help like lull him into sleep and then probably increase his sleep quality. But I just loved him being like, I am in such a good mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that's yeah. how it feels when you get your sleep optimized. That's what I've noticed. Cause I have really, really like honed in my nighttime routine mm. and man, when you get enough sleep and I, I make my room really cold, I have my fan on, I got, you know, just under some blankets and it's like, you wake up like ecstatically happy when you get good sleep. Like it is awesome. So it's worth it is. some, uh, some playing around with. I'd say. It absolutely is. And it, the thing is you, for those of you that are not sleeping well, you don't really experience this until you actually experience it. Like, it's like when you have the feeling right. of waking up refreshed, feeling good, you know, feeling just more centered, less, it's like, wow, you just don't even realize right. you think you're getting good sleep, which is why I think tracking your sleep is really important, mm. you know, you know, and not obsessing over it, right. but but having something to say, Hey, I, I did this routine. Or I stopped right. eating, I, whatever. And kind of to see, not just, just see it, but aware, just right. Awareness tool. So important. Totally. Um, you know, that's, it, it helps motivate people too. it create, creates, it can, can create momentum. Um, mm. when you're kind of seeing that positive reinforcement, like I did this and, and wow, like I, you know, not only can I feel better, but I can see that it's actually making a difference. What do you like for sleep tracking? The aura ring, the aura. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Too. It's, I think it's, it's a, yeah. the most user-friendly interface and it's, it, it's great. I, or is my preferred too. I like whoop as well. I use whoop for a while, but I find for the client experience, aura is a little more easy to understand and you know, you don't have to pay a membership fee and all that stuff. <laughs> but, well, unfortunately now you do. They roll Oh, you out. do. Yeah. It's, oh. it's, it's like, sorry it's, guys. Yeah. It's <laughs> seven bucks a month. They did. They rolled okay. it out a couple months ago. So it's, Okay. Um, so, but it is as far as from like a sleep tracker whoop, I think is definitely a better, like overall fitness and lifestyle tracker, but, but for sleep specifically, or ring just because okay. it's, you know, they're, they're focused dialed in on sleep. Um, it's yeah. So yeah, again, sometimes people obsess over sleep and those people maybe don't want to track their sleep Yeah. unless you have right. somebody that can help you with the data. Um, but in general, it's, it's a good thing to track if you want to. Yeah. It. And you're exactly right on like it being a, a tool for you to start making conclusions, like how we were talking about before, how sometimes you're just not aware of what is impacting what, like I wore an aura ring. I, I wore a whoop way back when, and then like waited a year for the first aura ring to come out. Like I was on pre-order for that. And <laughs> I wore an aura ring for years and I don't wear one anymore because I just don't feel like I need one. I wore that stuff for so long. Like I, I intuitively know I learned a lot from it. I'm grateful for it, but 
now it's just kind of, I, it actually tuned me more into my body, believe it or not. You know, Mm. it's kind of like tracking food and macros. I don't want anyone to do that forever, but when you start, when you get awareness and you're like, wow, I like literally hardly eat any protein at all. And then you change that and you start to notice how you feel and what happens in your body as a result of that, it actually tunes you into your body even more from the awareness created through that process. So a hundred, a hundred percent. I couldn't agree with you more. And it's not, and it's also great to like let it go as well yeah like like you have it's like you get to a point where it's like i I don't really need anything to tell me how i feel or what to do because i'm so dialed in (laughs) i just know like my body knows what to do and what not to do uh, i always say i feel like i got kicked out of the biohacker club because i go to the biohacking conferences and i'm like the only one there without one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're not but in the club yeah, terror, just, you yeah. know so many years you kind of you kind of get the rhythm but okay so we talked about uh light and we talked about temperature are you considering those an environment you talked about environment being kind of your final piece is that part of the environment piece or the physiological piece or are there any in either of those categories that are big hitters yeah i mean they, they definitely overlap because things that you change in your environment obviously can affect your your yeah. temperature and the light um but also just even like your physical spaces are very important. Like the colors on your walls, you know, um, and, and the things that you have in your home, as far as where are they placed, like feng shui type of stuff, like literally that makes a difference. It's not woo. It's not woo stuff. Like try it out and you'll notice a difference. Like if you have clutter in your environment, if you, if you have really bright colored paint on your wall in your bedroom, it's not the best you know, like right. you don't, it's not, so those types of things make a difference, like a sensory experience, um, smells, noise, you know, all of those things are going to impact. And I'm not just talking about in your bedroom, your bedroom obviously is the most important room in the home. You spend the most time there. Um, the bed's the most p- important piece of furniture, but yeah. your physical spaces impact the level of stress that you experience. Totally. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so I can't that's... work in a messy, I can't, I just can't like, and, and at my, I, even when I was like barely making it, I hired house cleaners. Cause I was like, I need to put this time towards business and I am working from home. I've got to be in an organized environment. Like it's anybody's noticed, like if your car starts to get messy and then you get it really clean, like you feel different yes. about like life. <laughs> You're like, uh, like I got my shit on lock versus like a mess. You know what I mean? It does. It yeah. impacts how you feel your environment big time. Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's really important. I think to just people to understand that. And there's a lot of little things you can do to sort of upgrade your, your spaces, you know, plants, um, you know, getting an air filter or something that's going to filter the air. I mean, that's really, really important. Yeah. People don't realize that, you know, we're breathing, hopefully you're sleeping seven, seven, eight hours you want that air to be fresh. If you live in a place where you can open the windows up, that, that'd be amazing. As long as you don't live in like a smoggy city or something like that. Yeah. But all of those things in your environment are going to affect yeah. your, you know, your quality of sleep, the depth of your sleep. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you real quick about, uh, breathing breath. I'm sure you've probably, you know, I don't know, talked about this at some point. Cause I remember this was before I was ever a health coach, ever even into fitness when I was married. Um, my ex-husband is one of those people that can like fall asleep in like 10 seconds. Right. Like it was just like, and gone, you know? <laughs> and I asked him about it one time and he, he taught our kids this too. And it really worked. He was just like, Oh, he's like, I just start breathing really deep. That's it. I start breathing really deep. And so I've, you know, I do that with my kids and I've definitely noticed because it's going to pull you in the parasympathetic. Is that something that you teach or have any thoughts on? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the breath is one of the best tools to control the parasympathetic nervous system. So we yeah. teach a lot of different techniques, have our clients try them out. Which one did you like? Cool. Um, I might take on like box breathing. I call it bed breathing. You know, I have clients just kind of, vision, right. you know, breathe around their bed, but any, any kind of conscious cool. diaphragmatic breathing. Yeah can be helpful. Um, there's, there's all kinds of different techniques, like, you know, progressive muscle relaxation, different Mm -hmm. styles of breathing. Um, I like to keep things really simple for people because people are overwhelmed. Yeah. So you um, don't want them to get into that obsessive problem solver pedestal mode. (laughs) Exactly. Like, Oh, I need to, you know, it's like at the end of the day, I always tell people just remember, you don't need anything to sleep. You don't need anything, no technique, no new mattress, nothing. Like we used to sleep on the freaking dirt (laughs) and people slept and they slept probably better than they sleep now in their their fancy beds and all their tech and all that. So, but at the same time, I think there is, there is, 
you know, you, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So there are things you can do that affect your physiology, which then affects the, you know, the opportunity for sleep yeah. to happen. Yeah. Okay. So your book, the sleep advantage, right. Is the name of your yeah, book. Yeah, that's right. Is it, but yeah. where's the, where's the best place to get that book? If people want to dive deeper into this stuff. Uh, so Amazon, and then it's also on audible. So if you don't like to read, Yay! I, yeah, I don't so. like to read. When I say <laughs> I read something, I mean, I listen to it on audible. <laughs> <laughs> Audible's um, the best invention ever. It's like the best you, ever. Yeah. I get is. so many more books. Me you know? too. I'm a huge um, audible person. Okay. And then sleep your, how, if they wanted to participate in your sleep Academy, where do they go for that? Sleep science Academy. So sleep yeah, that's science Academy.com. Yeah. That, dot com. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then you got your TEDx talk. We'll link that in the show notes. Anything else, any other ways people can partake of what you have to offer? Uh, I mean, social media, Devin Burke wellness. I, okay. I'm, I'm starting to be more uh, social on social media. Yay. I a, yeah. I know. It's a, it's a, it's a groove. I, I find it's like, if you get in the groove, you're in the groove. If you get out of the groove, yeah. you're not in the groove. <laughs> yeah. I was out of the groove for like pretty much decades. So I'm starting <laughs> to get back into it. So, um, but yeah, now I'm, I'm posting some more content and things like that Good. for people. So yeah, okay, so cool. you can connect with me there. Okay, cool. We will link that. Thank you so much for taking the time today and sharing this with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, th- thank you. It's it's uh, great to be here. And I, I love what you're doing with your, your clients, what you're up to in the world. So it's an honor to be here and, and to connect with you and share. Thank you. Likewise.